Hi. I went to see that movie, The Great Gatsby, last night. I thought it was really good. I hope you don't mind if I uh, finish off my martini. Anyway, one of the constantly recurring themes in this course is the necessity to get close to your data. Look at it in every possible way. So this, in this last lesson of the first class, we're going to look at visualizing your data. This is what we're going to do. We're going to use the Visualize panel. I'm going to open the IRIS data set. You came across the IRIS data set in one of the activities, I think. Uh, I'm using it because it has numeric attributes, four numeric attributes, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and the class are the three kinds of iris flower, iris setosa, iris verticolor, and iris virginica. So let's go to the visualize panel and visualize this data. There's a matrix of two-dimensional plots here, a five by five matrix of plots. I can Scroll up here, and uh, if I can select one of these plots, I'm going to be looking at a plot of uh, sepal width on the x-axis and uh, petal width on the y-axis. And that's a plot of the data. The uh, colors correspond to the three classes. I can actually change the colors. If I don't like those, I could select another color, but I'm going to leave them the way they are. I can look at individual data points by clicking on them. And this is talking about instance, uh, instance number 86, sepal length of 6, sepal width of 3.4, and so on. And that's a versicolor, uh, which is why the spot is colored red. So we can look at individual instances. We can change the x and y axis by changing on the menus here. Or better still, if we click on this little uh, set of bars here, these represent the attributes. I'm going to click on this and the x axis will change to sepal length. Here the x-axis is sepal width. Here the x-axis is petal length, and so on. If I uh, right-click, then it'll change the y-axis to sepal length. That's the y-axis is sepal length. So I can quickly browse around these different, uh, these different plots. There's a slider, the jitter slider, so sometimes points sit right right on top of each other, and jitter just adds a little bit of randomness to the x and the y axis. With a little bit of jitter on here, the darker spots represent multiple instances. So if I click on one of those, like this one here, I can see that that point represents three separate instances, all of class Iris Setosa, and they all have the same value of petal length and sepal width both of which are being plotted on this graph. The sepal width and petal length are 3.0 and 1.4 for each of the three instances. Uh, so uh, if I click another one here, let's see, this one here are two with uh, very similar sepal length and petal lengths. Uh, and both of the class Versicolor. So the jitter slider helps you distinguish between points that are in fact very close together. Another thing we can do is to select bits of this data set. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to choose Select Rectangle here. So if I draw out a rectangle now, I can select these points. And if I were to submit this rectangle, then all other points would be excluded and just these points would appear on the graph with the axis rescaled appropriately. So here we go. I've selected that. Uh, I've submitted that rectangle, and you can see that there's just the red points and green points there. I could uh, save that if I wanted as a different data set, or I can uh, reset it and maybe try another kind of selection like this, where I'm going to have some blue points, some red, and some green points, and see what that looks like. So this might be a way of cleaning up outliers in your data by selecting rectangles and saving the new data set. Okay, that's visualizing the data set itself. What about visualizing the result of a classifier? Let's get rid of this visualize panel and back to the pre-process panel. I'm going to use a classifier. I'm going to use, uh, guess what, J48. Let's find it under trees. J48. I'm going to run it. 
Now if I right click on this uh, entry here uh, in the log area, I can view the classifier errors. So here we've got the class plotted against the predicted class and the square boxes represent errors. So if I click on one of these I can of course change the different axes if I want. I can change the x-axis and the y-axis. Uh, but I'm going to go back to class and predicted class here. And uh, if I click on one of these boxes I can see where the errors are. So there are two instances where the predicted class is Verticolor and the actual class is Virginica. We can see these in the confusion matrix. The actual class is Virginica, that's here, and the predicted class is Verticolor, that's B. So these two, this uh, two entry in the confusion matrix uh, is represented by these two instances here. If I look at another point, say this one, here I've got one instance, which uh, is in fact a Satosa predicted to be a Versicolor. So that is this Satosa predicted to be a Versicolor. Now I can kind of look at this plot and uh, find out where the misclassifications are actually occurring, the errors in the confusion matrix. Okay. So get down and dirty with your data, visualize it. You can do all sorts of things. You can clean it up, detect outliers. You can look at classification errors. For example, there's a filter that allows you to add a classification. The classifications as a new attribute. Let's just go and have a look at that. I'm going to go and find a filter. You know, we're going to add an attribute. It's supervised because it uses a class. Add an attribute. I'm going to add classification. And here I get to choose in the configuration panel, a machine learning scheme. I'm going to choose. Uh, I'm going to choose J48, of course, and I'm going to output the classification. Make that true. That's configured it. And I'm going to apply it, and it'll add a new attribute. There, it's done it, and this attribute is the classification according to J48. Weka is very powerful. You can do all sorts of things with classifiers and filters. Okay, that's the end of the first class. Uh, there's a section in the book on visualization. Uh, please go and uh, do the activity associated with this class, and uh, I'll see you in the next class. Bye.